Hello again. So in the last video, we saw the sums and difference formulas for the cosine. Now we're going to see the equivalent formula or formulas, I should say, for the sine. We'll start with addition. And I guess I'll just uh, I know what I thought I was doing underlining that for. I'll just write the equality. So it's going to be the sine of x times the cosine of x, and then the sine of y times the cosine of y. And these are going to be joined via addition. So when we were looking at the sum formula, we made the remark that it was kind of irritating that the signs didn't match. When we had the cosine formula, addition turned into subtraction. That is not the case here. Addition on the left gives you addition on the right. And let's see, what did we do in the last video? We looked at an application where we looked at the cosine of 75 degrees. And we rewrote that as 45 plus 30. Let's look at the sine of 75 degrees. And again, the way we're going to do this is that we know the sines and the cosines of 45 degrees, and we know the sines and the cosines of 30 degrees. So we can write 75 as a sum and then use the sum formula And these sines and cosines are sines and cosines that we hopefully know. The sine is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine is also the square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three over two. So the square root of two times the square root of two, um, this addition, or multiplication, I mean, that's two. Then two times two is four minus the square root of three divided by four. Two minus the square root of three over four. As for subtraction, maybe you can guess, um, since addition here gave us addition here, subtraction here,
is just as you might predict, going to give us subtraction there. What did I do? I wrote a Y when I meant to write an X. There we go. Again, I would not worry about memorizing these. I mean, in invader sections, we're going to see even more identities. There are so many of them. It's just you'd really have to cram to, to, to memorize these all. But although I wouldn't memorize, I wouldn't worry about memorizing them, you should be able to use them. I mean, if you look up the difference or some formulas, you should be able to do examples like this one. And that takes us to the end of this video. In the next video, we'll finish up with the tangent. Okay, uh, moving right along. We have this formula for the cosine. We have a similar looking formula for the sine. So what are the differences? It's once again going to be two products joined together. But here we're going to have a sine times a cosine. And again, contrast that to what we have here, where we had a cosine times a cosine. Now we have different trig functions, and that is the second time I made that mistake. Look behind the curtains. I had to scrap a previous video. So it's the sine of x and the cosine of y. And then we're going to reverse that. We're going to have the cosine of x times the sine of y. And those are going to be joined via addition. And this is another difference from the cosine. With the cosine, addition turns into subtraction. Here, addition keeps being addition. And we can replicate this example. just to help drive the formula home. So we're looking for the sine of a sum, and we know the sines and the cosines of the individual terms. So this equals, and now we'll plug and play, sine of the first term, cosine of the second term.
plus cosine of the first term, sine of the second term. And now, let's see, we plug in these cosines and sines that we hopefully know. So, one half, the square root of two over two, minus the square root of three over two, times the square root of two over two. So we have a common denominator, first of all. Four is our common denominator. Then up here, one times the square root of two is the square root of two. The square root of three times the square root of two is the square root of six. So there's the sine of 75 degrees. Yes, this uh, this video is cursed. I said that I had to redo a video. I'm not going to redo it again. I'm just going to fix my mistake. We have addition here. That was not supposed to turn into subtraction. There we go. That makes more sense. Then, just like we have a sign formula for addition, we have a sign formula for subtraction. Um, There you go. The formulas are the same, except that whereas previously addition on the left gave you addition on the right, here subtraction on the left gives you subtraction on the right. And there we go. Again, I would not worry about committing this form to the to memory. Um, but I would be able to use it. Like, like I use the tier ideally without making the the same mistake that I made. Um but yeah, on tests, like I'll give you a sheet or something, or I'll or I'll let you bring in a note card. I won't assume that you've committed these to memory.